Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to the world's fastest half mile, Bristol Motor Speedway. It's the second short track race of the season, but like I mentioned in the Martinsville content earlier this year, all three short tracks are a little bit different, so I'm going to be looking a little bit more at track history this week versus track type history it's always good to look at who's good on on short tracks because that kind of racing is a little bit different than your than your mile and a half and super speedways and stuff like that so but definitely a little bit more weight on the track history side of things here at bristol motor speedway this week um, the rules package for this race this week is back to the 750 horsepower setup with just the taller rear spoiler but uh, in listening to some driver comments and stuff throughout the weekend so far this has created a lot more speed with that extra downforce they can get some more speed into the corners and this is why we've seen new track record uh, in qualifying um, this week so we're going to be looking for that as well it's, it's a tough race in the fact that it's 500 miles you've always got someone on your bumper you've always got, always got someone right in front of you and you've got someone door to door um, pretty much the whole race 500 laps out there so you know it's a, it's a matter of getting to the end uh, maybe not being so aggressive early on um, but with the new stage racing I mean that creates a little bit more um, panic you know getting that aggressiveness near the end of the stages to get those points which do prove to be crucial come the end of the year especially um, you know when looking at the playoffs and stuff and moving through the first couple of rounds and trying to get to the final four so there is going to be some aggressive driving at the end of the stages and the end of the race for sure it is Bristol um, you can make it to the end of this race with a, <laughs> a battered car Chase Elliott might have to do that he had some problems in, re in final practice got some dings on the right of it, rear right of his car um, he's got the pole here this week made some adjustments still starting there from the pole position because they didn't have to go to a backup car so that's good for him and looking at the last six races here you know from a fantasy perspective we're looking at dominator points um, in each of the last two races so both races last year the spring and the august night race there were three drivers as you can see here um, that all led 100 plus laps uh, there was four drivers to lead 50 plus laps in both those races as well and there's been at least two drivers to lead 100 plus laps in six straight races um, could be more but I've just put the six races into the cheat sheet so a lot of dominator points with 500 laps out there and with the stage race and as you can see it led to three drivers last year leading 100 plus laps so we're going to try and look for three or four drivers who have the potential to lead a lot of laps We'll be looking at practice times to do that um, 10 lap averages and then something else that came out this week um, the MRN website um, looking at the final practices here also give us the top five in um, 15, 20, and 30 consecutive lap averages. So that's really good data there as well to see who's got some good long run car out there. Um, so with that information, there's also some PJ1 which compound they put down the track to kind of open it up so we get some some racing. They put that down on the bottom. As you can see, it, it took some time to work in, but I believe it's good to go now. We're probably going to see cars um, you know, up there on the outside, but I think they can make the inside work there as well. We could see two lanes. Could be a lot of passing, so I'm not worried about place differential. I think we're going to see some this week. And as you can see, last year we had nine drivers with double-digit place differential in the night race, and then seven drivers in last year's spring race that picked up double-digit place differential. So I think we can get a mix of both, especially in cash games this week. Um, for GPPs, I think there's some guys maybe can fade but uh, some guys that are going to be chalked that you're probably not going to want to fade just because of their track history here uh, maybe their for their starts of the year we'll talk about those guys here in a second so with that let's jump into a few picks here a couple guys that i'm targeting here this week um, so right at the top it's very close um, between Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick, and see the weighted average here, 2.2 and 2.5. Very, very close between a one and two picks this week. Um, the system favors Harvick a little bit. 
um, simply because he's been a little bit more consistent here lately. He hasn't picked up a win. We're just going to go look at his last 10 races. Um, I like to look at here at Bristol, but more recently, you know, he, he's finished top 10 in six, seven straight races here. He had a win in 2016. He's got top fives in there as well. He's been very consistent here. And then just looking at his practice times, um, he was ninth in practice two. He had the fastest 10 lap average. He was fourth in practice three. And then going and looking at those uh, 15, 20, and 30 lap averages, Harvick led all three of those. So it looks like he's got a really good long run car. He feels like he hasn't had a winning car yet this year. He makes it sound like he's finished outside the top 10 every, every race so far this year, but he just got six top 10s in the seven races. He's been very consistent. He's third in the point standings. Um, so I think this is maybe the week that he can break through and get that first win of the season. And then Kyle Busch, talked about him a lot this year. He's top 10 in all seven races this year. Um, he's got top fives in five of those races as well, along with two wins, three wins, and all top 10s going back to Phoenix last year. We've This has been well documented. He gives us a lot of place differential this week. He started in 17th. He was fifth, uh, so he's got showed top five speed in both final practices. Not the greatest long run speed. He's got a good short run car, it looks like. Um, place differential. Definitely have shares of both. I lean Harvick just a little bit because of that discount. A little bit better practice speed, especially in the long run side of things. He's been more consistent here at Bristol, but I will have Kyle Busch mixed in there as well this week. Joey Logano comes in number three in my model here this week. He's been really good as well at Bristol. We're just going to go have a look at that. So fourth and ninth here last year, uh, 13th in the fall 2017, and then a fifth in the spring race before that. Top 10s in both 2016 races. He won a race in each of 2015 and 2014 there as well. So when it comes to the Penske guys, Logano's definitely my number one guy. Um, he, he was number one in P3. And then just looking at, he was third fastest in 30 consecutive, um, but not seeing him. Uh, he was there in 15 as well. I don't know anything outside the top five here on this list, but I believe he was probably just being that he was third and fourth here in 30 and 15 in the 20 lap average. I'm guessing he was probably somewhere in the range of six to 10th um, there as well, not to show up in the top five. So definitely like him. Those are going to be my three core drivers I'm going to build around. For GPP, I like going Ryan Blaney as well. Um, he showed a ton of speed here this week. He's got he's been really up and down so far this year. He's got four four races where he finished outside the top twenty. He's got three races sandwiched in between those um, three consecutive top fives in the middle there. So he's got a ton of upside. He hasn't been consistent. That makes him a GPP play for me this week, pivoting off those top guys. Um, Kyle Larson fits in there as well. He's been tremendous here. He's, he finished runner-up in both races here last year. He's number one when looking at track history here uh, over the last two years, top tens in all four of those races. Starting 16th this week. But they had trouble in practice, 20th and 22nd in those two or in those two practice sessions on Saturday. Kind of leaves him as a GPP play for me this week. Chase Elliott, like I said, he, he started. Uh, he's going to be starting on the pole, so he's only got negative place differential. So he, for me, if you're going to be going with Chase Elliott, I mean the price is nice at 8,900 and 11,800 on FanDuel. But for me, you're going to need him on FanDuel to finish top five for sure. On DraftKings, if you're going to be using him this week, you, you've got to have a feeling that he's going to go out there and he's going to lead. He's going to be one of those three drivers that's going to lead 100-plus laps. Um, his practice speeds didn't show that um, whatsoever, but, I mean, it's definitely not out of the realm for them to figure it out and go ahead and out there and lead a bunch of laps. So we'll definitely be looking at that uh, as a GPP play versus uh you know, a core play for me this week. Right below him, though, uh, Clint Boyer, uh, Kevin Harvick's teammate. They're going to be two guys. I talked about them uh, in one of my articles. I'm definitely looking at Boyer. He's been a consistent top 10 car all weekend. Uh, tenth in first practice. He qualified eighth, and then he went out, and he was seventh in practice two, fifth and 10 lap averages, 13th in practice three. Um, but what stood out there for me and makes me feel a little bit better about that 13th is his, is his long run speed. Um, he was right there, third and 15 lap averages fourth in 20 lap average and fourth in 30. So, I mean, it looks like he's got a top five car. He is starting eighth, not going to pick up a lot of place differential, but at 8,600, if you're looking at cash games, he looks like a core play for me on FanDuel, especially where I think he's going to be, you know, anywhere from that fifth to eighth position, finishing position. Finishing position is a little bit more important than place differential on FanDuel, so I definitely like Boyer over there. Same kind of goes for Jimmy Johnson. Um, Picked up a top five last week, so you're definitely gaining some momentum there. He started in 10th this week. He's been excellent here. Um, he's been excellent on short tracks. 
He was sixth in practice two, sixth lap, sixth best ten lap average, and then in practice three, he was uh, showed the second overall speed and also showed some long run speed. He pops here in the twenty lap averages uh, third, and then he's top ten in all the other ten lap averages there as well. So I mean. Um, definitely someone I'm looking at. You know, you compare Boyer and Johnson together in, in a cash game on FanDuel and feel very confident at that at those price tags that you're going to get a top 10 finish out of those two, um, which is going to be more than enough. Definitely looking at Eric Jones as a GPP play away from those two, kind of a pivot away. He's starting fourth. Um, a lot of people are going to pivot away from him, especially on DraftKings because of that. But again, he showed top speed. He's been good on at Bristol. Um, so definitely looking at him as a GPP play this week. One of my favorite value plays, he's number five in my model right now, is Daniel Suarez. He's starting 20th, so he gives us some place differential value, especially considering he was top five in one lap and ten lap averages in that practice too. He was ninth one lap speed um, when it comes to the final practice. He didn't pop here in any of these long run speeds, but I believe he was top ten in all of those. Um, so it looks like He's at least going to be a 10th to 15th place car, which for 7,300, 8,100 on FanDuel, I think that makes sense for him to be a core play here this week. And then going down, um, I am fading William Byron starting second. I just don't think he is a is going to be a top five car this week. Um, again, maybe a GPP play on FanDuel if you think he's maybe a fifth to tenth place car with that price. But losing place differential value, I think he's going to be outside the top ten this week. Younger driver at this tough track being 500 laps there. So definitely uh, I'm going to be fading Byron on DraftKings. I would consider him a deep GPP play. Um, pivoting off some of these other value plays on FanDuel. Matt DiBenedetto started in 21st, showed better speeds in practices. I have a quick look at uh, how he's done here. As you can see, he's top 20 over the last 10 races, looking at average finish on short tracks, or sorry, here at Bristol. 22nd, 21st here last year. 26th, 19th, and 2017, 17th, 6th. So he's got a good track record here. Definitely going to be a GPP play. Um, for me this week, starting 21st, I feel he's probably going to be in that 18th to 20th place, uh, 23rd, somewhere in there range. Um, very cheap mid-6K range on both sides. Ryan Priest is someone I'm looking at. This is his first cup race at Bristol, um, but he's starting 30th. 25th in practice two, showed even more speed in practice three, finishing 17th. So even if he finishes in that 25th place range, it's a great price um, for a 25th place finish, and he's got that top 20 upside there as well. Been pretty good so far this year in his rookie season as well. As you can see, um, he's only got one one top 10, but his average finish is 23.3, which is pretty solid jumping into the Cup Series here. So definitely looking at him. Now, while this is his first Cup race at the track, he won the spring race in the Xfinity Series at Bristol last year, so he's got that going for him. And then just looking at some other guys that are rookies um, with some track records in Xfinity, but not so much when looking at the Cup Series, Daniel Hemrick stands out as well at 6,600 on FanDuel. He's starting 26, so it's going to be a little bit more of a GPP. I'd prefer Priest or below him Chastain in cash games. But for GPPs, I do like Priest. He showed up top, top 20 speed in that final practice there. Um, 23rd and 10 lap averages when it comes to that practice too as well. So, you know, I think he's somewhere, his upside is somewhere in that 20th to 23rd range. Um, his floor is kind of around 25th to 26th, 27th, somewhere in there. Makes sense for a punt play in a Stars and Scrubs kind of lineup there for me. And he, in the Xfinity Series last year, he finished 24th in the fall race, he, or in the August race, but he was third in the spring race after starting fourth. So he had a strong car, and he finished well here last year in the Xfinity Series. Looking at that, um, Chastain does have some, in, in the cup car here, Two races under his belt in a cup car um, last year. He's 26th and 39th. And he'll be starting at the back of the pack here this week. So it does give him some positive place differential value. And then looking at his Xfinity career here, um, he raced both of those races here at Bristol last year in the Xfinity Series as well as the Cup Series. And he was 12th and 9th in those races. I'm not expecting big things from Chastain. Um, but for... 5700 on DraftKings, especially $4,000 on FanDuel, starting dead last if he finishes... So let's see, even just, like, I mean, he showed he was 30th, showed top 30 speed, which is excellent. 27th and 10 lap averages in that practice, second practice, first practice on Saturday morning there. But starting dead last, even if he finishes 
30th to 35th, I think that's enough for him to, to fit his value. So definitely looking at uh, Ross Chastain. And then if you want to punt even further, especially, um, you know, they're, they're probably together. I like Chastain a little more as Matt Tift starting 29th, just because of that place differential value. I'm always looking for that place differential value um, when looking at my um, back end guys, unless they're showing really top speed. But looking at the speeds, Chastain and Matt Tift are running about the same speeds, but you've got a whole bunch of place differential difference here. So I'm leaning Chastain. Tift is more of a, um, in some of my lineups, and running 20 to 50 lineups, I'm, I'll throw Tift in there just to pivot off Chastain so I don't have too much exposure um, to one punt play. It's kind of the way I'm looking at that this week. So that covers quite a few of my player pool this week. Core plays, GPP plays, value plays. If there's anyone I didn't touch on um, or anything you have questions about, lineup construction, contest selection, any of the drivers I maybe didn't discuss here in the video, definitely hit me up in the DFSR chat room, in the Roto Pros chat room, on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs9. Leave your comment below um, and I'll definitely get back to you and uh, help you out leading up to lineup lock, which is tomorrow tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon um, for those out there in the East. So definitely hit me up there. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. A lot more videos coming down the line. And let's go get some green screens this week. Good luck, everyone.